Ah, from time immemorial. The Irish have had a genius for storytelling, haven't they? And in the dark winter nights from Samhain, Halloween, to St. Patrick's Day, an audience would gather in some hospitable house around a turf fire or at the Kaelor Glen to listen until bedtime to one or more storytellers. This gathering was called a Kaelee. The storyteller could entertain these listeners every night for four and a half months without repeating a single story. Professor De James uh, Delargy cites the names of some storytellers who accomplished this seemingly impossible feat without difficulty. One of these oral storytellers made a series of ediphone recordings that ran to a total of over half a million words. That's akin to being able to recite the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. Word for word, from memory. Another storyteller recorded 120 long stories and other material. Others, whose repertory consisted uh, mainly of shorter items, surpassed 350 separate stories. Now, these remarkable storytellers are both men and women, of course, and one woman supplied 375 tales, of which 40 were of the long variety. Eamon Burke of Karna recorded a single story that was 34,000 words long. Gaelic distinguishes between the long story, a Sean Chagall, literally meaning old story, and the short story, an Akhtra, or uh, Shanuhus. The Sean Chagall is usually a tale of a legendary hero, or what professional folklorists uh, might call a fairy tale. The Akhtra, or Shanuhus, besides being shorter, stresses realistic detail, even though it usually deals with the supernatural. Ooh. A storyteller who specialized in the shorter tales would be known as, drumroll, Shanaki. Whereas one who had mastered many a long story, the Sean Shagail, would be given the title of a Shagaili. And so, today, this Shanaki now presents for you the Shanahu of Liam O'Rooney's Burial. In the olden time, there was once a man named William O'Rooney, living near Clare Galway. He was a farmer. One day the landlord came to him and said, I've three years rent on you, and unless you have it for me within a week, I'll throw you out on the side of the road. Well, I'm going to Galway with a load of wheat tomorrow, said Liam, William, and when I get the price for it, I'll pay you. <clears throat> so the next morning he put a load of wheat on the cart and was away to go away to Galway with it. When he was gone a couple of miles from this house, a gentleman met him and asked, Hey, is it wheat you've got on the cart then? It is, says Liam. I'm going to sell it to pay my rent. Hmm, how much is there in it? said the gentleman. Well, there's a ton honest in it, said Liam. Eh, I'll buy it from you, said the gentleman. And I'll give you the biggest price that's going in the market. <clears throat> now, when you go as far as the, the cart burin, the little road up there, that's on your left hand. Uh, turn down, and you'll be going till you come to a big house in the valley, eh? And I'll be, be, I'll be before you there to give you your money. Now, when Liam came to the Boreen, he turned in, and he was going until he came as far as the big house. Now, Liam wondered when he came as far as the big house, for he was born and reared in the neighborhood, and yet he had never seen the big house before, though he thought he knew every house within five miles of him. Now, when Liam came near in the barn that was close to the big house, a little lad came out and said, A oh, hundred thousand welcomes, uh, William O'Rooney. I put a sack, put on a sack on his back and went in with it. And another little lad came out and welcomed Liam, put a sack on his back and went away with it. All the lads were coming and welcoming Liam and putting the sacks on their backs and carrying them in until the ton of wheat was all gone. Then the whole of the lads came round him and Liam said, hey, You all know me and I don't know ye. And they said to him, Oh, go and eat your dinner. The master's waiting for you. So Liam went in and sat down at the table. But he had not the second mouthful taken until a heavy sleep came upon him, and he fell down under the table. And then the master of the house was a Dori, a, um, an enchanter. He loved to cause mischief whenever he could, and he made a golem, a false man, that appeared to be just like William. But he had no mind of his own, you see or even power of speech. He sent the Gollum home to William's wife with the horse and cart, and when Gollum came to Liam's house, he went into the room, he lay down on the bed and died. See, it's an Irish story. He was not long until the cry went out that Liam O'Rooney was dead, and the wife put down the water, and when it was hot, she washed the body and put it over the board, and she laid it out. 
The neighbors came, and they keened sorrowfully over the body. And there was a great pity for the poor wife. But there was not much grief on herself, truth be told. For Liam was old, and uh, she was young. The day on the morrow, the body was buried, and there was no more remembrance of Liam. Liam's wife had a servant boy, and she said to him, You ought to marry me and take Liam's place. It's too early, after there being a death in the house, said the boy. Wait till Liam's in a, a week buried, hmm? So when Liam was seven days and seven nights asleep, a little boy came to him and awoke him and said, You've been asleep for a week, but we sent your horse and your cart home. Here's your money, and go. Liam came home, and as it was late at night, nobody saw him. And on the morning of that same day, Liam's wife and the servant lad went to the priest and asked him to marry them. Yea, have you the marriage money, then? said the priest. Well, no, said the wife, but I do have a stirk of a pig at home, and you can have her in place of money. So the priest married them, and he said, Now send for the pig tomorrow. When Liam came to his own door, he struck a blow on it. The wife and the servant boy were going to bed, and they asked, Who's there? It's I, Liam. Open the door. Well, when they heard the voice, they knew it was Liam who was in it. And the wife said, Oh, oh, oh I can't let you in. It's a great shame you'd be coming back, Liam, after all being seven days in your grave. Who's it mad you are? I'm not mad, said the wife. Doesn't every person in the parish know that you're dead, Liam? I buried you decently. Go back to your grave. I'll, I'll, I'll have a mass read over your poor soul tomorrow. Oh, well, you wait till daylight comes, said Liam, and I'll give you the price of your joking. So then poor Liam went out into the stable, where his horse and the pig were, and stretched himself in the straw and fell asleep. Now, early on the morning of the um, next day, the priest said to the little lad that he had, Get up, go over to Liam O'Rooney's house. The woman that I married yesterday will give you a pig to bring home with you. So the boy came to the door of the house and began knocking at it with a stick. The wife was afraid to open the door, but she asked, Who, Who's there? I, it's me, said the boy. Uh, uh, who? Me? The priest sent. The priest sent me to get the pig from you. It's me. Oh, well, she's out in this stable, said the wife. You can get her for yourself and drive her back with you. So the lad went into the stable and began driving out the pig when Liam rose up and said, Where are you going, my pig? When the boy saw Liam, he never stopped to look again, but out with him as hard as he could, and he never stopped till he came back to the priest, and his heart coming out of his mouth with terror. What's on you? says the priest. The lad told him that Liam O'Rooney was in the stable and would not let him drive out the pig. Hold your tongue, you liar, said the priest. Lie into a, 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 a priest. Lie into me. A father of the... Oh, Liam O'Rooney's dead, and in the grave this week. If he was in the grave seven years, I saw him in the stable two moments ago. If you don't believe me, father, you come yourself, you'll see him. So the priest and the boy, they went together to the door of the stable, and the priest said, Go in, boy, and turn me out that pig. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't go in for all you're ever worth, said the boy. So the priest himself went in and began driving out the pig. When Liam rose up out of the straw and said, Where are you going with my, where are you going with my pig, Father Patrick? When the priest saw Liam, off and away with him, he's crying out, In the name of God, I order you back into your grave, William O'Rooney. So Liam began running after the priest and saying, Father Patrick, Father Patrick, are you mad? Wait and speak to me. I'm not dead. Father Patrick. Well, the priest would not wait for poor Liam, but he made off home as fast as his feet could carry him. And when he got into the house, he shut the door. Now Liam was knocking at the door until he was tired, but the priest would not let him in. At last, the priest put his head out of a window up on the top floor and said, William O'Rooney, you go back to your grave. You're mad, Father Patrick. I'm not dead. And I never was in a grave since I was born, said Liam. I saw you dead, said the priest. You died suddenly, and I was present when you were put into the grave. And I made a fine sermon over you, I did. Oh, what a devil from me, but as sure as I'm alive, you're mad, said Liam. But you get out of my sight now said the priest. I'll read a mass for you tomorrow. Well, Liam went home then, knocked on his own door again, but his wife would not let him in. Then he says to himself, well, I may as well go and pay my rent now. 
On his way to the landlord's house, everyone who saw Liam was running before him, for they thought he was dead, you see. And when the landlord heard that Liam O'Rooney was coming, he shut the doors and would not let him in. So Liam began knocking at the hall door till the Lord thought he'd break it in. He came to a window in the top of his house and he put out his head and asked, What are you wanting? I'm come to pay my rent like an honest man, said Liam. You go back you, you go back to your grave and I'll forgive your rent, said the Lord. Well, I won't leave this, said Liam, until I get a writing from you that I'm paid up to clean till next May. So the landlord gave him the writing and he came home and knocked at his own door, but the wife had not let him in. She said that Liam O'Rooney was dead and buried, and that the man at the door was only a deceiver. Hi, I'm no deceiver said William. I'm after paying my master three years' rent, and I'll have possession of my own house, or I'll know why. So he went to the barn, and he got a big bar of iron, and it wasn't long till he broke the door. And there was great fear on the wife and the newly married husband, as you can imagine. They thought they were in the time of the general resurrection, and that the end of the world was coming upon them. <sighs> now why did you two think I was dead? said Liam. Why, doesn't everybody know in the parish know that you're dead? said the wife. Your body from the devil, said Liam. You're humbugging me long enough, and you get me something to eat. Now the poor woman was greatly afraid, and she dressed him some meat, and when she saw him eating and drinking, she said, <gasps> It's a miracle. Then Liam told her his story from first to last, and she told him each thing that happened, and then he said, huh, I'll go to the grave tomorrow, and, and I'll see the bamooch that you buried in me place. So the day on the morrow, Liam brought a lot of men with him to the churchyard, and they dug open the grave, and they were lifting up the coffin, when a gigantic black dog jumped out of it and made off, and Liam and the men after it. Now they were following it till they saw it going into the house in which Liam had been asleep, and then the ground opened, the house went down, and nobody ever saw it again. But the big hole is still to be seen there to this day. Now when Liam and the men went home, they told everything to the priest of the parish, and he dissolved the marriage that was between Liam's wife and the servant boy, and Liam lived for years after that, and he'd left great wealth behind him, and they remember him still in Clare Galway. And that's the story of Liam O'Rooney's burial.